Okay, this could be pretty big news. There's reports of a sharp increase in red meat and dairy allergies in the USA. Alpha-Gal syndrome, a condition caused by a tick bite, causes people to develop a potentially fatal allergy to red meat and dairy. It's being reported this summer that cases of Alpha-Gal syndrome are skyrocketing in Martha's Vineyard, but cases are on the rise all across the US and the world. Martha's Vineyard is an interesting example. It's a small island with a population of just 20,000 people, and with a sharp increase in the number of cases of Alpha-Gal syndrome, there's been rapid changes on the island, including restaurants adapting their menus because so many people are now allergic to red meat and dairy. The really remarkable thing about Alpha-Gal syndrome is its sheer novelty. As recently as 2009, there were reportedly just a few dozen cases in all of the US. Now, less than two decades later, there's over a hundred thousand. I found two papers with data from patient testing in the US for Alpha-Gal syndrome over the last 15 years and combined them into this graph. In 2010, there were just 209 confirmed cases. By 2022, that number had skyrocketed over 400 times to over 90,000 confirmed cases. And that's just confirmed cases, actual positive tests. The CDC estimates that the true number of Alpha-Gal syndrome cases at this time was five times that number at 450,000. That's nearly half a million Americans with a potentially deadly allergy to red meat and dairy. And just 15 years ago, that number was less than 100. The real rate could be even higher than that. A 2024 paper that looked at serum samples from 3,000 enlisted military personnel tested positive for Alpha-Gal syndrome in 6%. While severe cases of Alpha-Gal syndrome can be deadly, most people who have the condition may not even know. A 2025 paper found that Alpha-Gal syndrome is very likely to be underdiagnosed, mainly because not enough doctors know about it. It also can be confusing from the patient's perspective, because unlike a peanut allergy, alpha-gal syndrome might take several hours after eating red meat or dairy for symptoms to manifest. By the way, notice that this data stops in around 2023. I couldn't find more recent data than that for actual confirmed cases, but it's being reported that 2025 is a huge year for alpha-gal syndrome. So look, this probably sucks for the people who get alpha-gal syndrome and wanted to eat red meat and dairy. But from a vegan perspective, is this good news? Some ethicists think that it might be. This recent paper published in Bioethics argues that if alpha-gal syndrome motivates people to stop eating meat, it can be seen as a bio-enhancer. The authors actually argue that spreading tick-borne alpha-gal syndrome is morally obligatory and they discuss ways of genetically engineering these ticks so that they can spread the syndrome further and faster. Well, not so fast. Aside from the issue of whether you would get agreement from broader society for such a project, you wouldn't, I'm not so sure that this would be good news for animals in any case. If you were listening closely, you heard me say that alpha-gal syndrome causes an allergy to red meat and dairy but poultry, fish, and eggs are left unaffected. So if all these new alpha-gal syndrome sufferers find that they can't eat red meat and dairy, and they instead replace that with fish, poultry, and eggs, that's actually gonna be pretty bad news for animals. Several different analyses of the units of animal suffering per kilogram of animal product produced, including this one by Faunalytics and this one by Brian Tomasic, conclude that chicken, poultry, and egg products are amongst the highest suffering per unit of product. This comes down to something called the small body problem. Essentially, smaller bodied animals produce less food per animal, so you need more of them to produce the same amount of food overall. You need to slaughter about 200 chickens to get the same amount of meat that you can get from a single cow. If alpha-gal syndrome pushes people off of red meat and dairy consumption, but consumption of poultry, fish, and eggs increases, then overall animal suffering is probably going to go up. However, if these individuals decide to reduce their meat and dairy consumption overall, and instead just replace this with healthy plant-based foods, then we could be witnessing the start of a tick-borne boom in veganism in America. Reporting on this topic makes one thing pretty clear. There's currently no known treatments or cures for alpha-gal syndrome. 
However, with the condition getting more and more prevalent, it's likely that more resources will start to be invested into finding a cure. There does also seem to be some amount of remission, with some patients reporting that symptoms decrease or desist over time, so the condition might not be lifelong. That said, this condition is certainly on the up. As well as exploding across the US in the last few years, alpha-gal syndrome has also been reported on every continent barring Antarctica. The first cases here in the UK were recorded in the Journal of the Royal Society of Medicine in 2021. The reason for the geographical spread of alpha-gal syndrome appears to be climate change. The ticks that carry alpha-gal syndrome rely on a warm climate. In the US, they were until recently confined to the warm states in the southeast, but now with the warming climate, they've spread further up north, all the way up the east coast, as far north as New York and Maine, as well as spreading westwards into the country. Now, I could be wrong about this, but I don't think that tackling climate change is a key objective for Trump. I don't think. All things considered, it seems pretty likely that the climate is going to carry on warming up, that the ticks that carry alpha-gal syndrome are going to carry on spreading, and that this allergy to red meat and dairy is going to become even more prevalent around the world. This could be bad news for meat eaters, good news for cows and pigs, but bad news for chickens and fish. What do you think? I'm sure you'll let me know in the comments. This is Chris Bryant, PhD. Cheers.